Well, the West is now telling Ukraine, game over, your time is up. The, over the past 24 hours, the U.S. mission to NATO released this statement to Ukraine, basically telling them it's time to negotiate a peace agreement. And even the warmongers on MSNBC admitted yesterday that Russia has won this war. Time to pack it in. Time to go home. Listen. Or two or three more years of this is going to result in success. I simply don't see it. Russia's on a war footing. They have access also to arms from North Korea and Iran. So I just think, you know, any time in foreign policy, any time in life, there's a big gap between what you're trying to do and your ability to do it. You've either got to right. uh, increase your means or lower your goals. And I think here the only realistic option as a tactical measure is to lower our goals. So is Ukraine about to finally admit defeat, actually come to the table, negotiate a peace agreement? Maybe we could get this before Christmas, before more young men or 75-year-old Ukrainian soldiers have to die in this war. Let's bring in former U.S. Marine, former U.N. Weapons Inspector Scott Ritter to talk about this. Scott, you've been predicting this. Well, you've been saying that this war has been over for months. So all that's left really is the fighting and the sort of the crying at this at this stage. And that seems to be what's left. Do you think that this is a moment when NATO is pushing for a peace agreement? Will they actually come to the table? You know, what we have to look at here is that we, we've got the West starting to put pressure on Ukraine um, for a negotiated into this conflict. Um, nowhere in there do you hear the term Russia other than acknowledgement of Russia winning. Um, Russia is not going to negotiate. I don't know what the West thinks is happening here. The time for negotiation has passed. The Russians have said this. Uh, Russia had kept the door open for negotiation all through the fall of last year, all through the spring of this year, even early summer. But when the West doubled down on stupid by throwing billions of dollars worth of equipment into uh, encouraging this counteroffensive that has cost Ukraine so dearly, and it's cost Russia. What people don't understand is, while the Russians talk about 90,000 Ukrainian casualties, Vladimir Putin has said that it's a 10 to 1 ratio. Uh, that's 9,000 Russian casualties. 9,000. That's not and, a drop you're talking, in the bucket. and this is just the counteroffensive we're talking about, the 90,000. That's right. We're not talking about the whole war, right. which by some estimates could be between 30 and 40,000 Russian dead, maybe 100,000 Russian casualties overall. Uh, Russia's not going to disgrace the sacrifice made by those soldiers by going to a negotiation with Ukraine. There will be no negotiation. I've said this all along. It will be a battleship Missouri moment. Ukraine will be given an opportunity to come to a table and sign a document that has been prepared by Russia, which outlines its demands, not requests, demands regarding this. Now, Russia will be very reasonable. You can, you know, people say, how do you know? Well, one only has to take a look at the negotiated agreement they came to back in March of 2020, which could have stopped this war, by the way, could have ended it on a 1 April. 400,000 Ukrainian troops would be alive today. 20 million Ukrainians would not be displaced from their homes. Uh, children would have schools to go to. Uh, an economy might be functioning. But no, Ukraine threw it away at the behest of the West. Russia will never offer those terms again. So, yes, it's nice that the West has come to this no, you know, realization that they have lost. What they have done is sacrificed Ukraine. They've used Ukraine as a tool. That tool is no longer useful, and they're seeking to discard it in a way that's convenient for the West. Um, the other thing is Zelensky, I don't believe, is capable of a negotiation. He has poured so much political capital into you know, this, this stance that he will somehow be the messiah that saves Ukraine, that with his leadership, the Ukrainian army can recapture the lost territory. And all that's happened is that he has subjected Ukraine to even more death, destruction. Um, I, I think Zelensky is going to have to go for there to be any chance of conflict termination. And we see this already happening within Ukraine, the split between Zelensky and his senior military, including General Zeluzhny, is real. Zelensky is taken to ostracizing uh, Zeluzhny, warning him not to get involved in politics. But Zelensky is an isolated man. If you look at the videotape of him sitting alone uh, with the American delegation led by Lloyd Austin, um, and the literal crazy look on his face uh, as he talks about Joe Biden's birth. This is a man who is totally out of touch with reality. Um, 
I, I think he's the problem now. And so I think what we're looking at right now is the West setting the conditions for the removal of Zelensky. And once you remove Zelensky, then you can get somebody who will be willing to approach the table of surrender, because that's where we're at right now. This will not be a negotiated settlement. This is a surrender, un unconditional surrender of Ukraine to Russia. <laughs> Fascinating. And, you know, over the past 24 hours, we've also seen out of Ukraine um, that, well, according to RT today, Ukraine is concerned by Western push for peace talks, according to this story, um, that they are specifically saying that this is irrational. This idea of the, the West is now calling for peace, basically calling it irrational and an irrational fear of Russia and Ukraine is so these people that are surrounding Zelensky, are they, are they delusional? You have this Alexei Danilov, the, sec, the, security, uh, the secretary of Ukraine's National Security Service, uh, saying that this is irrational, that we should be fearful of Russia, and the West must keep supporting Kiev if, if it wants to keep ruling the world, basically a threat to the United States. You know, your time is up unless you support Ukraine. Well, I mean, it's, this is part of the the arrogance of the Zelensky regime. Um, but you can't blame them. They have been coddled by the West uh, into believing they are the most important nation in the world, that the world revolves around Ukraine. If you go back and listen to the statements made by Jan Stoltenberg, the Secretary General of NATO, that a, you know, a defeat for Ukraine is a defeat for NATO, that this is an existential struggle of the West against Russia. That's how the West has justified this conflict uh, from the very beginning, especially in terms of the counteroffensive. And Ukraine was foolish enough to believe this, to believe that they are that important. But if I, as I have said from day one, Ukraine is not important. The West does not care about Ukraine. The West will throw Ukraine to the side the moment Ukraine stops being useful to the West and Ukraine has stopped being useful to the West. Danilov and the other advisors, <clears throat> you know, they have no future. They have no future whatsoever. And I and, and it, this could get extreme, meaning they don't have a chance to live, physically survive this conflict if the West abandons them. They have gone so far out on the ledge. They are responsible for so many crimes. Remember, when Russia wins, and Russia will win, they are winning, there will be justice for the murders, the crimes of the Azov Battalion. I know the West has tried to forget about Azov, but it's a reality. Their crimes are real. And those who perpetrated those crimes will be brought to justice, and those who facilitated those crimes politically. And that is Zelensky, that is Danilov, that is all these others. They have literally no future. So their only chance for continued, not just relevance, but survival, is to continue to have the West prop up the Ukrainian regime. And what they're seeing right now is the West refuses, or it, it's not just refuses, the West can't continue to prop it up. There's nothing left to give Ukraine. If, if you know the the Biden administration talked about a hundred million dollars worth of equipment coming in and in, in aid, um, in that is one high Mars, one high Mars launcher. That's it. That's all we got left to give. The Germans are talking about some billions of dollars worth of equipment, but the the number one ticket there, ten Leopard tanks, but not even the new ones. These are the old Leopard 1A5s. They're not survivable on a modern battlefield, and yet that's all Germany has left to give. The West has nothing left to give Ukraine, and they're not willing to dig deeper. Why? Well, for in the case of the United States, there's this thing called Israel. Israel's at a war with Hamas right now. Israel is getting all the artillery ammunition that it needs. And here's the, if you remember, Joe Biden, uh, a while back when asked why we're giving Ukraine cluster munitions, he said, we don't have anything left. Now put yourself in the Ukrainian shoes and they say, well, wait a minute, you said you didn't have anything left, but Israel right now is getting hundreds of thousands of 155 millimeter conventional high explosive rounds. Where'd those come from? Ah, we're giving Israel the stocks from our stockpiles, the weapons we need if we go to war because Israel actually is important to us. Ukraine was not important enough for us to give them our stockpiles. We gave them our reserves, and now that our reserves are depleted, we will give them nothing more. 
And that is a further signal to Ukraine that they just aren't important to the West anymore. They've outlived their usefulness. We now need them to quietly disappear. It's like giving out a birthday cake where pieces of the icing fall off and you give that piece of the cake to, to Ukraine eh, and you give the nice piece of the cake to Israel, like the one with all of that extra icing and the little decorations that my daughter would always want. That's that's Israel. They get the nice icing on the cake. So then yesterday when you have Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin showing up in Kiev, what do you make of that trip? He shows up there and uh, and offers up this $100 million package on the very same day that the U.S. mission to NATO basically says, come to the table for peace. What do you make of those secret behind? I mean, to be a fly on the wall yesterday in Kiev, what would you have seen, do you think? I think what they're seeing is that um, it's over. Uh, there's nothing left to give. Um, if you continue down this path, uh, you will fail. Uh, Russia has won and uh, we're not willing to invest um, the political capital, uh, the financial capital, um, the military capital into a losing cause. Um, that the assessment is that you, it, we can't turn this around um, and the best choice right now is for you to seek peace. I, if, I would hope they would also have the um, you know, intellectual honesty to tell Zelensky that if you continue this fight, the 20% that you've lost could very well become 40 or 50% of your territory that to continue this struggle to the bitter end will be a very bitter pill for Ukraine to swallow. Because if Russia, the reality is the Ukrainian army is on the verge of collapse. Um, this is acknowledged across the board. Um, and if they collapse, there will be a precipitous withdrawal and the Russians will fill that vacuum. And once they fill that vacuum, that territory will probably not be given back to Ukraine. Um, and this is the reality. Right now, Ukraine is able to maintain some sort of continuity and cohesion on the, the, the line of contact. But their reserves are gone. Their stockpiles are gone. They have no more troops. They're sending 54-year-old women to the front lines right now. They've sent pregnant women to the front lines. They've sent women. The Russians now are taking over the trench lines uh, where they killed the Ukrainian defenders, and they're finding you know, significant numbers of women in the front lines, dead now, killed, murdered, not murdered, but war is murder, I guess. So yeah, murdered. Um, you, you know, there's nothing there. And when the army collapses, um, Russia will be able to rapidly take control of uh, territory, which they'll never give back. And so I think what we're telling, I hope what Lloyd Austin is telling Zelensky is, this is the best it's ever going to get for you today. It will never be better than it is today. And today's pretty bad. Tomorrow will be worse. And every day after will be worse. And there's nothing we can do to alter this outcome. So your best bet now is to find a, a way to terminate this conflict on your best day, because it's just going to get worse. Hmm. Oh, well, hopefully they'll come to the table and hopefully maybe we'll have some sort of a, a, an agreed upon surrender, unconditional surrender and peace and the remaining people that live in Ukraine who've been dragged kicking and screaming to the front lines could actually have their lives. Uh, they could have had their lives, hundreds of thousands of them, uh, if this had been stopped until the United States and Boris Johnson managed to stick their neck into all of this. Scott Ritter, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. We really appreciate it in making sense of this trip yesterday from Lloyd Austin and this new message from NATO. Hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. Thanks so much, Scott. <laughs> thank you, and you as well.